In the last video, I proved that TSS is equal to RSS plus ESS. And in this video, I'm going to develop a number that would help us determine how well our regression line fits the data points. So let's say we have our XY axis and we have all of our data points. And then taking all of these data points, we can always develop our regression line with a with an intercept of beta naught hat and a slope of beta one hat. And in order to determine how well this line fits the data points, we can take a look at the RSS. So this term here represents the sum of all of these vertical distances squared. So this represents the sum of the square of the deviation between the data points and the regression line. So if your RSS is very small, that means all of these points stick very close to your regression line, and that will indicate a good fit. If your RSS is very big, that means all of these points are very far away removed from your regression line. And so that would indicate a very bad fit. So an extreme example would be when your RSS is equal to zero, and that in that case, all of your points will be lying on the regression line. So this would indicate a perfect fit. So if your RSS is equal to zero, this would indicate a perfect fit. And the larger your RSS, the worse your fit is going to be. So now I'm going to define a new number that is going to help us with interpreting how well this line fits the data. So the term that I'm going to define is RSS divided by TSS. And first of all, notice that this term here is always larger than or equal to zero. And you can tell that's true because individually TSS, RSS, and ESS are all larger than or equal to zero because all of these terms are sums of squared terms and squared terms are always larger than or equal to zero. Second of all, this term is always smaller than or equal to one because TSS is equal to RSS plus ESS. And since these two terms are always larger than or equal to zero, TSS must always be larger than or equal to RSS and ESS. So if I take this and divide it by TSS, then I'll get a number that's smaller than or equal to one. So now you can see that I've defined this number that always lies between zero and one. And you can see that this is very helpful in uh, helping us determine whether this line is a good fit or not. Because if our RSS is very small, which in that case indicates a good fit, then this term over here will be very close to zero. So a small RSS will be close to zero. And if our RSS is very big, it will have a value that's close to one, and that will indicate a bad fit. So for this term over here, the closer it is to zero, the better the fit is going to be. And the closer this term is equal to one, the worse the fit is going to be. So the smaller the, the, the value of this term, the better the fit. So this is a term that we've defined, and then you can see that lies between zero and one, and it's helpful for us to determine whether the fit is good or not. And you might think it will be a bit more intuitive if a larger number can represent a better fit. So, so far you can see that this term represents a better fit if the value is small. So maybe we can change this term a bit so that a larger value can reflect a better fit. So that seems a bit more intuitive. And we can do that by defining the term r square. That's equal to one minus RSS divided by TSS. And so this term is also between zero and one and the interpretation of this term is the complete reverse of this other term that I defined. So we can interpret this uh, if it has a value that's close to 1, that means this value is close to 0, and so that would indicate a very good fit. And if this term is close to 0, that means this term is close to 1, and in that case that would indicate a very bad fit. So this is how you can define this term r squared. And for a larger value of r squared, the, uh, the better the fit is going to be. And before I end this, I just want to show you one last thing. So R square, I just defined it as 1 minus RSS divided by TSS. So that's just this definition. And then I can actually rewrite this in such a way. So TSS is equal to RSS plus ESS. So these two will cancel out. So in the end, you can express R square as ESS divided by TSS. So this is another way to express R squared. And also, one last thing I want to show you is that I can connect, you can actually connect the value of R square to the sample correlation. And I will do that starting off with this term. And then I'll just apply the definitions of ESS, which is just yi hat minus sample mean of y squared divided by yi minus sample mean of y squared. And then if you go back to the video on the explained sum of squares, I showed you an alternative way to express 
the x plane sum of squares, which is just equal to beta 1 hat squared times xi minus sample mean of x squared divided by yi minus sample mean of y squared. And then now I'm going to use the definition of beta 1 hat, which is just the sum of xi minus sample mean of x, yi minus sample mean of y, divided by xi sample mean of x squared. So I'm just going to apply this definition into here. And so that what that gives us is that r squared is equal to, I'm just going to apply this directly, so we have the sum of xi minus sample mean of x, yi minus sample mean of y, and the entire term is going to be squared, so it's the square of the entire sum. And then don't forget, we also have this term in the denominator. So xi minus sample mean of x squared, and then this entire term will be squared as well. And then this will be multiplied by these remaining terms over here. So we have the sum of xi minus sample mean of x squared, and the sum of yi minus sample mean of y squared. And you can see that one of these terms will cancel out. So in the end, you're left with something like this. So we have, so I'm going to give it a big bracket. And then we have xi minus sample mean of x, yi minus sample mean of y. I'm going to square the entire term. So for the terms in the denominator, I'll have to give it a square root. So we have the square root of xi minus sample mean of x squared, and the sum of yi minus sample mean of y squared. And this entire term inside the square term, this is actually just a formula for the uh, correlation between x and y, the sample correlation. And usually we use the symbol rxy to represent that. So you can see that this is just the sum, uh, just the square of the sample correlation. So this is just rxy squared. So in this, in this way, we can actually connect r squared to the sample correlation.